If you're starting to write a book and you're not sure if you want it to go young adult or new adult category, then this video is for you. I had been planning to record this video for some time and I had it planned actually in my schedule for the future, but recently you asked me this question and I decided why not just make the video now? <laughs> And this video is only about the difference between young adult and new adult. Of course, there are middle grade and just adult categories, but I have actually made a playlist with other people talking about all of the other different categories. And with this video, I'm just going to focus on the two. My name's Kellyanne Wolf, author of The New Adult, Urban Fantasy, Castilian Blood, and I am currently writing a young adult epic fantasy, but details for that are still a secret, so stay tuned. Please subscribe to this channel if you would like more tips on writing and publishing. And if you ever have a question, just like I'm doing in this video, and you want me to make a video of something, I will do that too. So first, what is YA? YA stands for young adults, and it is intended for minors ranging between the ages of 13 to 17 years old, while NA stands for new adults, which is intended for people who are coming into adulthood. They are new at being an adult. This ranges between the ages of 18 to mid 20s, 25, 24, 26. Now, these are not set in stone. It can go up, it can go down, and it depends on the tone, but this is usually the guiding point. So what defines the categories, yes, it's the age, but it's not just the number, it's everything that comes with being a certain age. This includes the character's mentality, their goals, who the book is intended for, and intimate scenes. Now, there are probably more things that declare the differences between YA and NA, but I felt that these four things are the strongest points that define the categories when reading a book. So number one, your character's mentality. A character who is 16 or 17 years old will have a different way of looking at the world than someone in their 20s or mid 20s. The character is still dependent on someone, be it their parent or a foster parent or a grandparent or whoever. They still need to ask for permission for rides or to go to places or, you know, sometimes for the parents to buy something for them because maybe they're not allowed to work depending on the situation of your character because they need to study, they've been getting bad grades, they want a job and their parent says no. That is different than someone in their 20s who needs to be dependent and do everything on their own. Minors are coming of age and self-discovery and their minds are usually focused on the here and now, what's happening to them now, what they want now, what can they get right now, <laughs> while the new adults are more focused on what they need to get done for the future, what they want in the future, and they're thinking more about their future. However, like I said before, these things aren't really set in stone. You may have a character who is 16 or 17 who is thinking and planning about their future and you can definitely incorporate that. I know that when I was 17, I was thinking about the career that I wanted. Just know that these are special cases and usually, and for the most part, you know, they're, they're, they are really thinking about their emotions at the present moment. For someone who is 25, they might be reaching a quarter of a life crisis if that's what we call it, when, you know, if they don't have things figured out, if they don't have their career planned out or finishing their degree or whatever, and they have an attack, a 16 or 17 year old, their mentality is not there. So questions you should be asking yourself here are, is your character meant to be inexperienced? So how will they handle situations that are thrown at them if their mentality is in the here or now because they're 16 or 17 and they get derailed off of what they want to do or their goal or whatever how will they handle that situation versus how will someone in their 20s handle the situation another question you will want to ask is is it crucial to your storyline that your character is working or looking for a job as, let's go with the UF, <laughs> the urban fantasy usual thing, 
as a bartender or somewhere where it would be illegal for a teenager to be working. That, that leads me into number two, which are the character's goals. The goal of a 16 or 17 year old will be different from that of someone in their 20s as well. Now, not always, you might still get a teenager who may be taking care of children, whether it was an early pregnancy or they're foster kids and they feel a responsibility to take care of the other kids. It doesn't have to be a different genre, it could be fantasy, but you know, those are special cases and that depends on you and how you wanna tone your story. But typically an adult has different goals that it could be, settling down in the future or you know now ish and those kind of things whereas a teenager will have different goals which are maybe who will take them to prom or things like that so just as an example if you do have a character whose goal is being prom queen then you know you have to ask yourself is this going to be a point in the story that is incredibly important. If something needs to happen at prom, then you're looking at writing a young adult book. I mean, well being said, obviously, right? Unless we're reading the book Carrie by Stephen King, then, you know, that's horror and that's in a different tone and direction. <laughs> but now, since I'm bringing up Carrie and Stephen King, this brings me to the third one. Who is your target audience? Who do you want to be reading your book? Who is the book for? Just because you have a teenage main character doesn't mean that it's actually intended for teenagers. Looking at Stephen King, Carrie, the movie It, or the book It, and The Shining all have middle grade characters or teenage characters, but the tone is set for an adult read because there are things like graphic sex scenes, things like rape, things where the child protagonist is going through horrible life events that you do not want a child actually reading and experiencing in their mind. So those would obviously be for adult fiction, not going into adult fiction, but I am mentioning this so that you know, just because you have a minor as a protagonist, it doesn't mean that anything can happen on the page and it's only categorized based on the age of the character. Who the book is intended for shifts the tone entirely. So this is a very big thing. Usually both YA and NA categories are very voicey and the character has a strong personality and attitude, sarcasm. They're usually written in first person, which makes it easier to bring out that character personality. So those are tones that bring it into young adult or new adult. But when you start bringing in really, really graphic scenes, then that's no longer the case. So some other things that may tone it for YA or NA is the way it's written is pretty fast paced and some cursing is allowed, is involved, usually in both. Just don't overdo it with YA. Of course, teenagers do curse, but we also don't wanna piss off the parents. <laughs> That's just the reality of it. I mean, you can drop some curse words here and there, but just don't overdo it. That's all. You know, even with new adults, it does kind of put off the reader when it's just like constant, 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 curse word, curse word, curse word. It might take the reader out of the story and that's what you need to look at. Now, sometimes there is a character who curses a lot and that's fine, that's their personality, that's what it is. Maybe that pisses off the reader, but I mean, there I have to say, well, that is the personality of that particular character and you gotta kind of put up with it. That character may be intended to be annoying and that's what, you know, that's what comes out of it. But if all of the characters are just completely just like F-bomb, F-bomb, F-bomb this, F-bomb that, then choose another word. <laughs> okay, the last thing I wanna say about the intended audience is just keep in mind that even though 
many adults read YA and they're the ones reviewing, they're the ones usually blogging. Sometimes you get adults who are just like obsessed with YA and it seems like only adults are the ones reading YA. This isn't entirely true. Teenagers are still reading YA. Just keep it intended for the audience. And I say this because I feel like it is really important. There are many other YouTube videos on this also, if you want to do a search, that YA has become focused for an adult market, even though it's intended for a young adult market. This brings me to the last thing, which is intimacy. In both young adult and new adult categories, it is common for there to be character attraction, and sexy scenes. However, when it comes to young adult, I'm gonna say this again, keep in mind who the book is intended for. There are books out there for YA that have graphic sex scenes. That is because the writer got it in their head that, well, mostly adults are reading YA anyways, so I'm going to write it for them. I do not believe that this should be the case because let, let's be real here, 16 year olds are reading it. And yes, they are experiencing and you know their bodies are developing and they're curious or whatnot or whatever, but let's keep it young adults. You know, it's very common to have a little bit of skin showing. Keep in mind that the character, they're self-discovering. So they're not just jumping into sex. Some of them are. But we do not want to, you know, just have it plainly in books and encourage that. <laughs> Let them grow up naturally and become adults and then read books that are, you know, then they have the choice of reading new adult or whatever they want. But for the sake of YA, most readers like it to be clean anyway. Adults who want a YA with graphic sex scenes should probably put the YA book down and go read that other stuff, pretty much. Now, the rule of thumb is though, if there is going to be sex in a YA, then usually it is just glossed over and it is not graphic. Now, when it comes to new adults, now that's allowed and sometimes even expected, so have at it. <laughs> And if you'd like an example of this, then go ahead and pick up Lying with Demons in My Castilian Blood. Book one does not have anything graphic because I'd like to, you know, introduce the characters before something happens. So Lying with Demons and also Dragons and Demons, which is an ebook that is now available on Amazon and Kobo and Google Plus and all of those other happy stores that have ebooks. I really hope this video helped you. And one last thing before you go, I put together a playlist including a video from Jenna Moresi and she really goes into it and she talks about middle grade and adult as well. So make sure you check that out. I have the playlist somewhere on the side, go for it. And I will see you in the next video.